Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a wonderful day or night and that you'll enjoy the video and thank you so much for watching. Okay, girls, I am back. Sorry, I was traveling this week and it was just so busy that I did not have time to get on TikTok, but I'm here now and I'm ready to answer some questions. So first up, we got this one where a guy asked you to reschedule twice and now you're saying, how do I politely say don't waste my time? The only way to politely tell someone not to waste your time is to no longer give them the option to waste your time, no longer giving them the chance to waste your time, which means this is the case where I would, I guess, ghost somebody because you never even met. You don't owe them an explanation. You definitely do not need to tell them why your time is so valuable. You do not need to explain your worth and your value to people, especially not strangers. So in this case, I would never answer them again. If this is on Bumble, I would unmatch them. If this is on text, I would block them. If this was on social media, I would block them. Like, I simply don't care. You would never hear from me again. Like, even if you waste my time once, sometimes I like to give people a little bit the benefit of the doubt. Usually not, but sometimes I give people a little bit of grace depending on their reasoning. But twice, you will never hear from me again. You know, it's still surprising to me how many people go on TikTok to ask for advices. All the lady said she met a guy on Bumble, he asked her on a date, he had to reschedule, and now he's asking to reschedule again. She asked you what would be the polite way to say don't waste my time. And there you go talking about standards and values. When did that came up in a conversation? And then you go on and say block him, block him, block him. Well, that's great, but that was not a question. From her comment, she seems nice. You should have said maybe use common sense. It's not bad behavior that we're lacking in today's society. It's common sense. So maybe the answer should have been consider what his reasons to reschedule was and go from there. If he had valid reasons, even if you feel like not going on a date with him, just send him a text saying, I don't feel like we're gonna go somewhere. I wish you best of luck. Just forget to ever met. You only sometimes give second chances. Yeah, because there's a difference between me and Chad. I know it and you know it. I think I've realized something. What you're outlining here was a really big issue between me and my husband. He would bring up something that I had done that had hurt his feelings, and the conversation would switch to me somehow defending my value. I grew up basically being a golden child in my family. My family was pretty and I was like the only proof that my parents had that they were doing okay. And in that way, it became a really big deal when I messed up. My brother would miss school and it was fine, but if I miss school, it was the end of the world. Because of that, I internalized this sense of essentially, I cannot be bad. I have no value if I am bad. And so when my husband would point out legitimate things that I had done that hurt his feelings, it triggered that sense of, holy I'm bad. And then the conversation where he's just trying to tell me how he's feeling comes into a fight about whether or not I had even done something wrong. So basically dismissing his feelings, yeah. In my desperation to be good, I hurt people's feelings. Well, at least you realize that now, so better late than never, I guess. But this is exactly what men say when they say we cannot open our feelings to our wives or girlfriends. This is it right here. And it's not even about you being a golden child. It's about some of you, if not most of you, can never take responsibility that you have done something that will hurt your husband's feelings. At least I'm glad that I see you taking responsibility for your actions and not yelling out that men cannot open up to their wives because patriarchy or whatever those lunatics are yelling out. I'm so over men doing... No, that's it. I'm just over men. What's up? doing the bare minimum. There you go, I finished that idea for you. And I know I don't speak for all men, but what most of us will have to say about that is we really don't care. I think one of the toughest lessons that I have learned since turning 27 is it now takes three business days for me to recover from a hangover. And I can tell you, I have been in a state, and it is not the state of Queensland that I live in for those past three days. Let me tell you.
Well, I'm really glad you shared that. Never need to know type of information with us, but sure, I mean, why not? I've listened to way worse. I actually appreciate this information, to be honest, because if that's how you look at 27, <laughs> I really need to stop drinking. I don't even think it's age-related, because I'm 45 and it never took me three days to recover from a hangover. It's probably more about how drunk you were the night before. I wonder if there will be an easy solution to your problem. I could share it with you, but I think I'm gonna let you find the answer by yourself. I spent all morning on the verge of canceling a date and then he canceled and now I'm furious. Yeah, I bet you are. How do you like those rejections though? They don't feel all that great, do they? Well, you better brace yourself because they're gonna be coming more often now. Just a friendly reminder that if she puts her hair into a ponytail while maintaining perfect eye contact with you, then one of two things is about to happen. And if you aren't absolutely sure which one it is, run. Oh, princess, but I started running a hundred meters ago. I didn't even notice you started to put your hair into a ponytail. Full body tattoos, nose rings, that was more than enough reasons for me to start running. Corporate America and f college. I want to be a dancer. I think I just went blind. Uh, college? I mean, it's great that you set up your life goals, but uh, college? I think college should have happened maybe 50 years ago. You want to be a dancer, you go right ahead. But make sure you have a good warm-up before, warm those joints properly, because, you know, you don't exactly look like you just graduated from college. You look like pretty much that age when it's easier to dislocate a hip or something like that. Okay, if I'm trying to manifest something at lightning speed, I'm talking, I need it done yesterday. There's one thing. There's one thing I do. And it works every time. For one day. One day. I will fully delude myself into believing that the thing that I'm trying to manifest has already happened. I will treat the entire day the way I would if the thing I manifested has already happened. Fully call my homegirls up and be like, guess what just happened? And they will fully believe it, even though it didn't f***ing happen. Guess what happens that day? It happens happens every time i must have manifested something really bad in a previous life because now i ended up watching this you're not even talking about something that you manifested and it happened you're only talking about something that may happen if you manifested all i heard is that you're lying to your friends if manifestation worked like you're saying it works won't you have stories about something that already happened Guys, how do you make a woman obsessed with you and make her hunt you down like you're a freaking steak? Okay, you don't really want that, but in case you did, here is how. Dun dun dun. I offer coaching on how to make a woman obsessed. By the way, Instagram DMs, but seriously, here's how you do it. You be an individual. You stand out as a lone, solitary soldier in this crazy world where we all take life too freaking seriously. That is the most attractive thing a man can do. I just hurt my neck making this video. Instagram DMs, guys, if you want coaching. Yeah, not only that you haven't told us how, you expect me to take advices from a 30 plus years old woman that plays in bed with a teddy bear, panda bear or whatever. I'm not sure if that's your go-to every night or maybe you just ran out of batteries tonight, but I'm gonna pass. Okay, um, I should not be sharing this, but um, the most embarrassing thing happened today to me at the amusement park. So a lot of you guys know that like pretty much every day I'm always wearing, you know, something down, down there. Like you, you, if you know, you know, uh, I like wearing one. It's nice training. Anyways, um, so I didn't even think twice about it. And I went on the fastest roller coaster they had at the amusement park. It was all fun and games until it wasn't. Let's just say I do not, not, not recommend you wear one on a roller coaster. It is very bruised right now. It hurts very, very, very much. I think I might not be able to wear one for a couple of weeks now, which makes me very, very, very sad. And it hurts a lot to do yeah, um, please learn from my mistakes. Don't do it.
Why you should never wear a plug on a roller coaster? Well, because common sense, maybe. Learn from your mistakes. Now I think I'm going to use common sense. Well, here's an idea and maybe if you try it, let us know how that works. After you recover, of course, and you start wearing one again, maybe while wearing that plug, go really fast over a speed bump. And then come back, let us know. I think it's a great idea, don't you? Anyway, this is gonna be it for today. As always, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you didn't, I still appreciate you for making it this far. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you in the next one.